I'm speaking, of course, about Stephen Brill. He's co-founder of Press Plus. So explain to me, I mean, you've had a number of successful ventures here. Why do you think that pay for content is the new model, and how does your software system work? Well, you, you just have to look around this, uh, this building to understand that, that paid for content is a pretty good model. Mm -hmm. uh, the Bloomberg company has been a pioneer in that, and um, it's the best example. But on a local scale, whether it's uh, you know local news of the town zoning board or national news, I think there's still a proposition that is viable that people who produce distinctive content should be and can be paid in some part by the people who read that content. Mm -hmm. And what we're doing is enabling publishers all across the world to charge a modest price as they want to, however they want to, whether it's per article, per month, per year, um, allowing people to sample 20 articles before they ask them to pay, um, allowing nonprofits to seek donations. What we're doing is putting the power to realize value from their content back into the hands of publishers with no middlemen. They, uh, the publishers decide their own prices, their own terms. You're selling essentially the tools to transition to pay and, for content. And the convenience because our customers will have one account, one password across thousands of websites. So once you've signed up once, you simply have to click mm -hmm. in order to um, in order to uh, subscribe to something else. And there's an account that remains yes. with Press Plus. Yes. Okay. We handle the accounts and the payments and basically relieve publishers of that burden so they can go about the business of getting the content and then figuring out how they want to uh, be charging their customers for that content. Now, as you know, what you're talking about doing here and enabling, it, it hits on this broader debate within journalism, which is, is content a product or is content a service? The example you're using in financial news, people could say, oh, it's so specific, it's such a niche. People need the information because they have a use for it right away. They're trading off of it possibly, or they've got deeper pockets anyhow so they can pay for this kind of niche information. How do you think that this can apply to everyday news in everyday America? Well, this morning, 44 million people in everyday America went down to newsstands and purchased a copy of a newspaper. They've been doing that for years, in fact, in much larger numbers over the years. Mm -hmm. um, that's been undercut by the fact that they have an alternative, which is they don't have to go to a newsstand. They don't have to wait till you know six or seven in the morning. They can go online at night and get that same content for free. So what we're doing is simply advancing the proposition that whether you get content in a more convenient form online or whether you get it in a less convenient form in print, that it has some value mm -hmm. and people will be willing to pay something for it. This is a very old idea. This is not a new idea that people will pay something for their local newspaper. Now, in one of the most recent articles written about your company, the example used was a newspaper in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, right. charging for obituaries. Right. One of the things we're doing is allowing, in fact, urging our publishing affiliates to start very slowly. Mm -hmm. It's not like they have to dive into a deep pool and wonder how deep is the pool and how cold is the water. They can go into the shallow end very slowly. So they're starting simply by charging people who live outside their market but who log on to read uh, the obituaries every day. So you're charging... And then they'll advance to, to charging more people for more things, if that works. You're providing a service for the publisher. The consumers are paying here. Yes. But Rupert Murdoch has been vocal with News Corp saying that when it comes to dissemination of content that he has a problem with Google essentially uh, making money off of clicks by putting his information, his content out there. Do you think that the distribution uh, area here is perhaps another avenue for well, you? Well, I have less of a problem with Google uh, than Mr. Murdoch does because the way I see Google is they're pointing people to articles. Mm -hmm. uh, Google News says, here's this article, you click, you go to the article. Then if the publisher wants to decide that after you've read a paragraph of that article or maybe after you've read 10 articles for free, it wants to charge you, then it can. So Google can become a sales agent for all the publishers who are signing up for journalism online. So they could be 
a competitor to you potentially? No, no. I mean, in fact, they will be they will be the best source of accounts uh, for Press Plus, okay. the absolute best source because that's how a lot of people find uh, news articles. Then they see something that intrigues them, they see a website that intrigues them, and they say, you know, I'd like to use this website a lot. Mm -hmm. So I'll use uh, my Press Plus account, and I'll click here, and I'll subscribe to it. 